by a nonprofit that helps people save historic places. Sites that tell these stories of the multi layer history of Hawaii. We do this through education, advocacy, assistance, and protection of and for historic places. I'd like to now introduce and extend a warm welcome to tonight's panelists. Ma'alehu Anthony is a native Hawaiian from Ka'aaba, Oahu, and is the founder of Paliku Documentary Films, a production company that focuses on documentaries and oral histories with a special emphasis on Hawaii and its people. He has a vast array of experience in the film industry and has been immersed in the Hawaiian community throughout his life. His desire to give voice to Hawaii stories as told by Hawaiians from our perspective is the very reason he pursued a career in film and television. His other great passion is being a part of the voyaging community. As a crew member since 1996 and more recently as a captain aboard Hopulea, his voyaging experiences have shaped and um, has shaped and defined him as a person and has been a focal point for his films. He was in charge of onboard communications for the team that documented the worldwide voyage and sailed multiple legs of the journey. Welcome, Ma'alehu. Ken Tatsuguchi is an engineering program manager. He administers and directs the functions of the State Department of Transportation Highways Division, planning branch in conformance with departmental policies and professional standards, which includes the supervision and management of the planning survey section, advanced planning section, and systems planning section managers, and the sectional work. Welcome, Ken. We are incredibly grateful to have you both here tonight. So the film Wailua Kiababa Ona'ali'i Valley of the Kings was created as part of a Kukio Highway widening project. This past July, Historic Hawaii Foundation was thrilled to present Paliku documentary films, the Hawaii Department of Transportation, Kehau Kikua, Freko Smith, and Beverly Muraoka with an Achievement in Interpretive Media Award at our Virtual Preservation Honor Awards. The film grew out of concern by various Native Hawaiian consulting parties involved in the consultation process for the highway project. They were concerned that the importance of this place would be lost in the rush of modern life. Something was needed to make sure people knew the importance of Wailua and of the Aina. Storytelling was a major theme that was established by all consulting parties involved in the project. The film engaged storytelling as a vehicle to successfully provide an accessible visual and narrative history of this part of Kauai. It is not only striking in its cinematography, but also in its establishment of personal connections to spirituality, history, sense of place, and identity as captured by the people from this community. We wanted to take this opportunity to hear from our panel about the process in making this project and film come to life, touching upon the struggles and triumphs they both encountered. This film is an incredible example of how seemingly separate and sometimes opposing perspectives can come together and create something positive and beautiful for the community. Na'alehu, if you could start us off and just take us through your own objectives in creating and producing this remarkable film. Uh, aloha, wow. um, Mahalo for this opportunity to talk about the film tonight and for showing it. We're honored by the, uh, the award and, you know, this is, um, this is such an important project. You know, we wanted to, um, we were talking about it earlier with, with Ken and everybody and, and, you know, obviously there was a kind of multiple specifications that had to be met with respect to a project of this size and, you know, how it fit into the larger construct of what, um, what needed to be done as part of the, the mitigation for a, of a, a highway widening project. But really the way we took it on, our whole team took it on as like a, a kuleana to make sure that um, we could capture the stories of this place in a respectful way. And I think that's always been what we've tried to do, whether it was with Paliku documentary films or OEV TV, is to try to bring some amount of clarity uh, to some of the stories that might not get told unless you have a kind of um, reach and pilina that our, our team has built over a couple of decades to be able to engage in these types of projects. And, you know, it's worth mentioning that um, this wasn't necessarily a, uh, an easy project. I mean, there's multiple pieces to the puzzle and multiple stakeholders, but this is also probably one of the most fulfilling 
Uh, we had just finished the worldwide voyage and this was the first uh, big documentary that we had done after hopefully it was worldwide voyage and it it was important for us to spend some time in the place and to um, really get a feel for um, what Wailua had to offer not only creatively but also just in getting to know some of the characters that we meet in the film um, and I think over time um, over the edit process and and just getting into um, diving into some of the creative, we, we were able to find ways to span uh, space and time that we hadn't really done before. Like the animation of the genealogy was super important to us to get right. I mean, we're talking about um, chiefs and characters who didn't exist in modern times. So there was no drawing, there was no picture, there weren't elements that you could utilize in a documentary set but they were still critical to understanding the scale and scope of why Kauai and therefore why Lua was so important. And so we're just uh, really thankful for some of the ways that um, we were able to creatively kind of help to tell the story. Thank you. Um, so Ken, going off of what Na'aluki said, can you take us through the process of your and HDOT's involvement? I know as an engineer and planner, creating a film was not something you were used to, so if you could just share a brief recap of the project and how and why the film was created, it'd be wonderful to hear your perspective um, and all that went into this project and what the, what was important to you um, as far as the process. Okay, for sure. Um, so I'll kind of share um, the clinical and procedure things that we had to do, but I'll give you some of my insight, um, being that this is do, doing a video in a, a roadway engineering uh, agency is not in our wheelhouse, but um, anyway. So um, the scope of work for this project is basically um, an additional lane with intersection improvements for basically um, a half a mile stretch, basically from the temporary um, bypass to Kuomoa, okay? And the reason why this project moved forward in terms of um, need is because it's a highly congested area. You know, the, the gateway to Kapa'a and Wailua is, is highly congested. And this was um, an area that was identified as, as a major bottleneck for that area. So we move forward with the environmental of um, this project. And we knew that we were gonna leverage or use um, federal funds for this effort. So during our environmental process, um, you know, it might be familiar with the, um, the NEPA process, but, um, Another regulation that was triggered was um, the National Historic Preservation Act, Section 106 uh, regulation, okay? So that was a catalyst where this video came from, but um, some, some background on that is, um, so part of the process, we had to do consultation and, and other efforts were to identify the historic properties. So through the consultation process and also doing an archeological inventory survey, uh, we identified basically um, along a route, three historic properties um, would be affected or uh, in terms of um, impact, it was identified as an adverse effect, okay? So we knew that um, further consultation would occur and um, a stipulation or a mitigation would occur, okay? And um, further um, discussion and consultation, you know, we really realized, you know, and, and personally, you know, um, as, as the video showed is um, the Wailua Ahupua is very, very important. There's a lot of historic properties. Um, there's still um, past, I mean, there's past cultural practices and there's ongoing cultural practices. It's a very special place. And personally that was, this whole thing was like a learning experience for me. Okay, I'm an engineer, um, stuck in the office and, and learning these new things, pretty awesome. So anyway, um, you know, we wanted to be sure that, that we do mitigation that's, that's proportionate and takes care of um, looking at the entire Aupua. And one of the um, ideas that came out through the consultation process is doing a video. Um, and we started off with like 50, I would say 56 possible mitigation items. And through a filtering process, one of them being, if it's really feasible um, is, is um, um, you know, if we can do it, what, what came out of, you know, the Wailua why, why video um, um, still came out of as, as a mitigation through the, um, in the MOA. So the next steps was 
um, to move forward with with um, doing a video. And um, I tell you, um, again, being being an engineer and planner, we don't do this kind of stuff. But we had a lot of support in in uh, moving forward with this. And I tell you, I, I think we were very fortunate uh, going through the government competitive uh, process in 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 getting uh, Nailelo on board. Um, you know, with his experience and 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 knowledge and and understanding and. I mean, I'll share this part um, that I thought was important for the video was that um, we be sure that we're sure to capture the history and cultural importance of this area, and 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 I and I think we did that. Um, yeah. Okay. Maybe if I could just follow up a yeah. little bit. I think that that um, you know the the team at at HDOT wanted to make sure that this wasn't just like check the box. Yeah. Like I think it's easy to just check the box in these kind of productions, but it, you know, in those initial meetings, and especially because um, we had Ohana from Kauai who were on the the HDOT team, it was like. This is an important opportunity for us to really step above and beyond what um, maybe what was just said as like a like a mitigation project. And so, you know, we could tell that on both sides of the equation from the from uh, from the onset, this wasn't about just like oh, okay, well, let's make a video to satisfy these technical requirements. This was like this was an opportunity to engage. Um, engage all kind of stakeholders in bringing forth a project that was like a slice of time of what this place means to all kind of people. And to do it in a respectful way, I think is, is like, um, there's multiple sides to it, right? It's like, okay, the, the outcome or the output is a film that's 30 minutes long that everybody gets to see, but it's also about how you manage relationships over time. So when you go into the community and you approach people and say, hey, do you want to do an interview? Like there's a whole different set of ways at which you can approach that so that it, it goes well. And also I think um, one of the things that we've tried to do as a Native Hawaiian production house and, and you know, first and foremost, like I'd like to throw out a bunch of names from the production side that made this production possible Kapoor Roback and Amy Kalili and Scotty Kanda, uh, to Ken Chong, to name a few. Um, the, the production team comes at it very differently than what you might find in um, a regular production house. Um, engaging in cultural practices, um, you know, being able to uh, converse in language, uh, bringing Ho'okupu to Heiau, bringing Ho'okupu to somebody's house, understanding the way at which you need to approach uh, both location as well as practice is an important factor in making everybody feel like it's okay to enter into the way uh, you need to for the sake of practice. Um, and so as we, as we entered into this, this was like a, yes, there are all these technical specifications to meet, um, because this is a this is a quote unquote mitigation project, but this is also an opportunity to really do some great storytelling, and to produce something that, again, is that slice of time that people can look at and rely on. As and it should be also noted that this is not just uh, one of the requirements that makes me really happy is like, yes, there's a 30 minute project that is finished and that goes on uh, YouTube or wherever it goes, but there's also all of this. Uh, first person source material, whether it's interviews, all the B-roll, all of the material that we shot that goes into the record as well. So for, for, you know, for all of time, all of this stuff moves forward together. And so it's a great opportunity to pull. I mean, we pulled, I don't know how many days Kapua spent in the, um, uh, in the archives looking for material that was of the time and early, early stuff, all those old stills that we could use as photo separation to be able to really bring forth a really great product and not just check a box. 
And that was, I think that was, the reason why that was important wasn't just important to us, it was important to Ken um, and Pua and everybody else on the team so that it, it really felt like a, a solid project at the end. Awesome. Um, I know that you both were extremely passionate about making sure that this project was done right for the community and the culture here in Hawaii. Uh, maybe if you could both just kind of touch upon how you were able to create that necessary space and those relationships to make this project and film successful. Whoever wants to start. <laughs> maybe I can get started yeah, and, then, and then maybe you can help fill in. It's like you know, the, the stuff that we do is like um, it's like an ongoing building of community. It didn't start with the Wailua project. It doesn't end with it. It's like, um, like the first thing we did, the, honestly, the first thing that we did when we came on is like, okay, um, we know that this is a contentious thing in the community. Who are all the people who, um, who are involved in this project? And like, like, tell us their names, write them all down. And then like, figure it out whether or not we knew them or we knew someone who knew them and like call them up, it, what is this about? And it's like, it has nothing to do with maybe the end product and filmmaking, it has everything to do with making connection. And so that when you finally do get to go and film, it's a much different conversation because this isn't the first or last conversation you have with these folks, you know? And the reason why that's important is because Hawaii is so small Everybody knows everybody if you just go like two or three concentric circles out. And it's much easier to engage, I think, in a way where, and, and especially because of the brand that we had built up with both Poliku Documentary Films and OEB TV, where it's like, oh, oh, that's, that's Amy Kalili. She's the one who speaks Hawaiian at the, at the Mary Monarch. Or she's the one who speaks Hawaiian um, at Hawaii News Now. Oh, that's not Alehu, that's the guy who shot the voyage. And all that does is that solidifies the set of relationships that um, one, we're respectful, and two, the kind of products we make, we always feel comfortable being able to bring it back to the community. And I think that that's a different set of, um, that's a different kind of kuleana than what we've seen in the past in the last you know, 20 or more years of filmmaking where it wasn't possible to do these kinds of films with crews from Hawaii. And honestly, you would, get, you would get an outside film crew who would come in and say like, hey, we're here, tell us your story. And then they would take it and they would go back to wherever they were from and they would cut what they cut and then that would be the product. And they would never have to balance that out with whatever the the community thought or the people who were in the film thought. And ultimately, and I think this is where I'm gonna jump off and toss it to Ken, but ultimately that reflects, either of those situations reflects on HDOT because they're stuck still widening the road. They're stuck having to uh, interface with the community. And it was clear that whatever job we did, a good job or a bad job would reflect on um, Pua and Brian and Ken and the rest of BOT. And for us, it was like, we wanted to make sure that we left it better than we found it. So that, I mean, one, hopefully we get to work with Ken again, but more importantly than that, two is like the community feels better about this thing that was called a mitigation project for a freeway widening as some part of, of some much larger thing. And that's critical and it has nothing to do with filmmaking that has to do with relationships. So just to expand um, where Nile uh, Lehu left. Um, so, you know, we did have a big discussion on, you know, our situation on, on uh, going through the, the 106 process. It was a little contentious um, and and understanding that, you know, we're gonna continue to um, operate and maintain roads and we have relationships um, in the community with the stakeholders, with the landowners, uh, with the commuters driving through that corridor. And um, 
you know, Nalu and his, and his gang, they did a really good job in understanding um, our situation and um, and forging ahead and 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 moving forward and 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 making things. I don't know if I can use the word, but Pono. So you know that 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 is really good. And just to share with, um, so so thank thank you, Nalu. Um, and also to share, like you know, um, I wanted to be sure that our project team. Um, does a does a good job on this video because it, it represents the community and it's something that we want them to own. But the other part of it is um, I'm here in Oahu, but my projects are out, out there, and we also have a district office out there. Uh, Larry and his gang. Um, that's their community, right? And I have a relationship with the projects I do out there and with Larry that supports that area. So it's not just dealing with the individual projects that have opposing um, issues such as you could have a 106 issue that that kind of conflicts with the needs of maybe efficient wildlife or abutting landowners you know I just mentioned you know stakeholders there, there's always trade-offs there's 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 nothing that's going to be perfect okay and we have to find a way to get the job done okay and and you know it's and 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 you know not just getting the job done now but this is ongoing, okay? So everything that we do has to be pono or correct, you know, because to for us to continue to do a good, um, um, to keep our, our, our roads um, in, in good um, operations and maintenance, we got to have relationships and it's with everyone. And, and, you know, it's not just building a good road and making it safe and efficient as best we can, but everything that we do, like this video, you know, it's, it, it touches out uh, everyone and it represents us too and it helps us continue the relationship. So um, yeah, you know, just, just to expand on, on um, what Nyla said and, and, the, and the topic on hand. Thanks. Thank you, such an important conversation. Um, we do have a couple questions from the audience. Okay. Um, so someone had asked, um, were there Wailua residents involved in the section 106 consultation? And did they influence your decision to make the film? And does HDOT think this is effective mitigation that could be a model for projects in other locations? Okay, um, I, I think that's my, my, my question to respond to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, we had um, you know, um, a lot of um, consulting parties or NHOs that, that were from the Wailua area and, and, and the community. Um, the, um, I think I missed the second question, but, um, in terms of, I'll answer the question of, um, possibly doing, doing, um, future videos for, for maybe other mitigation. It is, it is, um, it is something that, that, um, we're just, actually, we we're just discussing earlier. Um, yeah, you know, we think it's a good idea and I'm not sure if we mentioned this, um, but we think it's it's a perpetual record that that captures um, the historic properties or the culture. But but really, it's the spirit of the area. And and I think I think having something like a video is is a is a good um, um, is a keeper. Okay. I, I don't know what the. I think there are three questions, and I think I only answered two. I'm sorry. No, no, that's great. Um, we also have one, um, one other question, which is perfect because it can kind of wrap everything up since we're running a little short on time. Um, but another question that we had from the audience was, um, which heyals were impacted by the widening of the road and what was the mitigation? Oh, there, there were no heyals uh, impacted. Um, so the historic properties that, that we, we found were actually, um, we did some, um, the archeologists did some borings on the side of the road where we'd be widening on the Malka side. And they found, um, um, I, th I believe two on Kuhio Highway and one on Kuomoa, but we, we didn't impact any of the, um, the hail. Okay. Um, I think that'll wrap everything up. I don't know if um, Naolehu or Ken, if you want to say any last words before I kind of wrap up the um, event tonight. Yeah, I mean, maybe just to give thanks to um, all of the staff that made this happen and to 
really encourage everybody to um, engage in these kinds of processes. I mean, I, I, not only not only like a, you know 106 processes and and some of the things that we've talked about with respect to uh, how we can negotiate out the changes that we're seeing in Hawaii, but also um, I think it like I was looking earlier when the film was going and there were 60 something participants and now there's, you know, there's close to 50. And one of the things that I think is so important is that these kinds of engagements help us all um, understand the different perspectives that come into entering into these kinds of projects. They're surely not easy. I mean, we were in, we were in uh, trying to figure out the contract for months. And, and that's not a negative thing as much as it is to say that these things take a long time to figure out and they take a long time to really engage in a positive way. But this is also looking at the, um, the outcome of something that went well. And um, I think it's important for our community to show up for all the things, the stuff that goes well and the stuff that we're passionate about that maybe isn't going as well. And that it's important to celebrate the kind of partnerships that can take place uh, when they do so in a way that is effective to um, help us move forward as one community. You know, the, um, the, the part that I was so interested in is like Kauai, um, right? Like, like you look on, on uh, Instagram, it's like hashtag Kauai Unconquered. You know, there's a reason why they were unconquered. And, and you know, and it has to do with the, the way at which their people are so incredibly um, solid in their community. And that, that means that the, uh, the cultural continuity of what persists there is still, is still accessible today. And it's because of like how solid those folks are, right? And that they carry this stuff forward uh, as a community. And, and for me, just to be um, allowed in to document some of that with, the, with our incredible team is such an important piece of uh, the pilina, the relationships that can be built and can persist so that hopefully this product, this thing that came out of like this idea of 106 mitigation, which is like, you know, kind of like not even the same language to many of us, ends up being a thing that we can all celebrate as saying like, hey, you know, this thing worked out in a way that the end product was good for the community. It was good for DOT. It was, it was good. It was like an entertaining product that allowed us to learn something that maybe we didn't know. And if we can do more of that, that's an important thing. That's a worthwhile thing. Thank you, that was beautiful. And then Ken, did you wanna say anything or? Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't better now a little, but you know, I, <laughs> I do want to um, thank HHF and, um, you know, for, sh for sharing our video and giving, um, you know, um, us a chance to, to share um, the process we went through. I, I, I think it's sometimes good to um, share that perspective. Um, and I also want to thank everybody who, who's uh, watched the video and, and uh, listened to this conversation, uh, hoping to have more of these. I, I think it's, for, for myself, I think it's important um, or it's good for, um, I guess, you know, the community or, or just, just, you know, people to understand what, what, what we do, um, you know, because there's a lot of work that goes into this and, and you know, it's, it's great to share, share um, what we go through. Um, and, you know, the last, last pitch is, um, you know, I hope we do more videos. I, I, think, it's, I think it's a good thing. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We hope you enjoyed the film and the panel discussion. Um, I would also like to thank our executive director, Kirsten Faulkner, and our education program manager, Andrea Nandoskar, for providing technical support. And a big mahalo to Naalehu and Ken. I'm so appreciative of you guys being here tonight. Um, I encourage everyone to sign up for the HHFE newsletter list at historichwaii.org to receive upcoming event details and other opportunities to learn and engage with the historic places that make up our beautiful Hawaii. If you are in the position to, please also consider supporting HHF and our work through the Join Us section on our website. 
I hope you all have a wonderful evening. I wish the best for you and your loved ones. Take care and mahalo nui Thank you. All right. Well, all right, thank you.